XRP used for the payment of oil? Oh, I gotta share that story with you. Along with an Airbnb story that's guaranteed to put a smile on your face. And former traditional finance bosses, now the CEO of mega crypto companies? Due to the graphic nature of this program, listener discretion is advised. And you know we're going to talk XRP price action at the end because my phone was going off like crazy during this most recent dip. Heat map? Nah, that's not how we work today. Kids, your comments come first. Drop me something hot, something spicy. Maybe I'll share it in the next video. Richard says, you're right. The Dems have the opportunity to stop Gensler but refuse to do so. Broken promises are all we're going to get. Jeremy Touche supporting the channel. Thank you very much, sir. I greatly appreciate it. Jeremy says, wake me up when XRP breaks 80 cents. I'm going to take a really long nap. By the way, Klaus, you are the man, sir. Thanks for keeping us in the know. That's right. I bring the news whether it's good or bad, happy or sad. And today might be one of those days where I bring both good and bad. Brutus Maximus says, Kamala may be personally interested in crypto, but she's in a party that supports the deep state and the Chevron rule. Even though the Supreme Court already ruled against the Chevron rule recently, the deep state still operates by their interpretations of their own unelected regulations as seen in the Federal Register, as also seen with Gary Gensler. KB says every politician in this country, country is a criminal, lying, scamming, backstabbing person, corruption like you can't believe. XRP has been open for business. I'm sorry. So sorry the price did not move. Total corruption and manipulation. Yeah, here's how we're going to start off the video. Fuck our government because the government doesn't do shit. It's all broken promises. I remember when the Dems were running the last time and they were like, yo, if we get in office, if we beat Trumpito, we're going to make weed legal. Shit still hasn't fucking happened and you've had control for four freaking years. Bitcoin's in at 57,841. They're moving them out. Gox BTC. I'm not too worried about it though. ETH is 2555 tons pulling back big here to 653. Sold at 138 XRP. We're going to talk about that price move that happened while I was running. Holy shit, all of a sudden I think my Garmin's telling me my heart's going to blow up. I had a hard workout today. No, it was just my crypto alerts going to my watch. 56.1 is the price of XRP. While well, you know XLM struggles to hold that 10 cent. 9.5. All right, all right. I'm starting this off, okay? With a story to make you smile. This is going to make you feel warm and fuzzy inside and going to make you feel like, you know what? There's things in this world that, ah, oh, let me just share it, okay? Crypto miners made $100,000 from mining at an Airbnb for three weeks. The guests ran up a $1,500 electric bill. Now, first things first. The reason they used an Airbnb, a residential place, is because residential electricity rates are way cheaper than commercial. So there were no rules, right, saying that you couldn't use the Airbnb for a little bit of crypto mining. Oh, this is messed up. Listen to this. A popular Airbnb host has been forced to implement a new bizarre rule when renting their house to guests. The rule? No crypto mining. The change came after guests amassed a $1,500 electric bill during their stay. The guests were seen hauling out at least 10 computers and also set up an improvised electric vehicle charging station. <laughs> after the experience, the property owner Ashley took to her TikTok and said, this is the weirdest Airbnb rule I have ever had to implement. But here's the best part. She said the guests left the home perfectly clean and gave her a five-star <laughs> review after their three-week stay. The electric bill amounted to $1,500 during their stay. Ashley checked the external security cameras for the property and watched the visitors haul out the goodies. Okay, so what saith you? Want to mine a little BTC, but you don't want to pay for the electricity? Go rent an Airbnb. There's probably not a clause there. Now, let's talk about traditional finance big players moving into the crypto space. You want to bridge trade fi with a little bit of DeFi and C-Fi? Let's do it. There's a reason, though, they're getting traditional finance bosses in the mix. Because Grayscale's CEO is a fucking loser, and they were bleeding. They were bleeding hardcore with the BTC ETF and bleeding hardcore with the ETH ETF. You're saying they're Klaus, though. Why were they bleeding? Because the fees were way too freaking high. Seriously, on the BTC ETF, they were charging 125 or 150 basis points for the BTC ETF, while their competitors were charging 20 basis points. 
That's right, they were like six times more expensive than their competitors. So if there's two gas stations, you and I are driving down the road, right? You're hanging out with Klaus, we're in our low rider, we're flipping the switches because we want to look good for the hotties out there, right? We love our hotties. So we're sitting there and you're like, bro, we got to put gas in this low rider because like we can't cruise the strip much longer. I'm like, no worries, there's a gas station up there. We go to the gas station down the road, you know, and we're still doing a little three-wheel motion because we want the Feminitas. Don't worry, XRP price action at the end, along with XRP news you're going to want to hear. So we get to the gas station, and we're about to fill up, and we see $5 a gallon. And my buddy taps me on the shoulder. He's like, bro, look across the street. Gas over there is only $2.50. I'm like, homie, hit them switches. Let's get the gun out and pay cheaper for that gas. That's what happened with Grayscale. The company has been experiencing substantial outflows from its Bitcoin trust product and its ETH ETF products. Mintzberg, with his robust financial background from Goldman Sachs and Blackhawk, is anticipated to steer the firm through these turbulent times. Graystale Investments has seen massive, massive outflows, and that has also led to the departure of Michael Sonnenstein. Now, will this new CEO be able to fix things? I mean, all you got to do is lower the rates, but you also got to make sure you're profitable elsewhere. Now, I know you've seen this story. UAE and India using XRP for oil trading. That's a false story. No freaking lie, everyone. It is a false BS story. And I do not like Crypto Erie. I cannot fucking stand her. But she's got a point. Because check this out. In 2023, here's another one. Breaking RippleNet users, UAE and India ditched the dollar for oil trading. That was in 2023. Here's another one. UAE and India use XRP for dollar, for oil and historical. It's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. And that's the big problem with all of this. There's so much junk going around on Twitter right now that like seriously, you spend how much freaking time trying to decipher if it's real or not. Now, the reason Jeremy, I'm so glad that he helped out the channel is because of this. This is how Jeremy and I actually started conversing with each other. He was asking me about all these stories and like, bro, is this one real? Is this one real? And I was like, no, this is not. This one's not. This one's not. This one's not. And he was like, dude, he's like, come on, man. He's like, what is going on here? What is up with all these bullshit stories? Well, that's the big problem. If people out there are reading this and like, oh my God, XRP is really being used, it's not. But if they're thinking that, they're going to be let down when they find out that it isn't. So no wonder XRP has trouble breaking price action because the majority of the news out there is absolute and complete bullshit. What we're going to do now is swing the heat map on. Oh, not the heat map. Damn, Klaus, that run really with your head. Nope, we're going to switch it on over to the candlesticks to the 15-minute mark. And I want to show you what happened while I was running. I'm hanging out here, and we were right at 57 cents. We broke right through 56. Dropped all the way down to 55.21. This is the lowest we have seen it since the 11th of August. So there is still more downward pressure on XRP. In fact, we're seeing more and more pressure to the downside. Open interest has gone down. Volume has really, really plummeted here as of late. Why? Because people were anticipating more from Taurus. Just like Erie brought up the story how you know UAE and India aren't using XRP for oil payments. It's the same thing. What about all those shillers and influencers out there that were telling you, oh, once the Taurus happens, we're going to go to 100, 500, 1,000. What about ERAG Crypto and his stupid fucking predictions of XRP is going to go hyperbolic with an 80,000% gain? Shut the fuck up. It's all lies and it's all bullshit. Right now, what are we waiting for? We're waiting to see how political atmosphere shakes out. We're waiting to see how Middle East tension shakes out. We also want to see what happens with Kamala because if she does win, she's very anti-crypto. That would not be good for XRP, would it? We're also waiting to see if Jerome Powell is going to be a good boy and drop us a 50 or a 25 basis point on the next meeting. But all these BS stories are leading to this, where people are researching stuff and just realizing that it's all bullshit out there. And that's harming you, seriously. Now, granted, there is some definite good news out there with XRP, but that news is hard to find because the market is flooded with crap. And in fact, I will be honest with you, Twitter is the absolute cesspool of bullshit when it comes to XRP. If you go to Twitter and you are viewing anyone other than Eleanor Tourette, 
You are totally losing your mind. She is the only one I trust when it comes to Ripple and XRP reporting. But right now, what we got to do is wait and see if XRP can claw its way back or if this low volume is going to have a slide even further as open interest is declining and volume is now down 12% last 24 hours to only one billion dollars and we know the weekends are boring and we know the weekends have been rough price wise i just hope we can hold through this weekend because otherwise this isn't going to be a fun one so the oil story is bullshit and it makes its rounds every year or so hoping to drop some news that pumps the price but it's bullshit see i bring you the news whether it's good or bad happy or sad am i happy to report that a big xrp ripple story is false no it sucks but I got to do it because that's my job. My job is not to shill. My job is not to influence. My job is to bring you the news both sides. And I'll be honest with you, speaking of both sides, I'm not happy with the Republicans either. And the reason I'm not happy with them has to do with Patrick McHenry and all the times he threatened Gare Bear. Oh, Gary, uh, I'm going to subpoena you. Don't make me be the first subcommittee to subpoena the sitting SEC chair. He didn't do shit. Meanwhile, Gary's like, well, if you ain't going to smack my hand when I'm reaching in the cookie jar, I'm going to take all the fucking cookies. Meanwhile, we still don't know what Kamala's policy stance is regarding crypto. Kamala, you've been VP for nearly four years and you don't know how you feel on crypto. Oh, wait, that's right. You're trying to steal as many votes as you can while you overpromise and underdeliver. Because how many times are we fed a line of bullshit from both sides that never comes true? Very similar to the Ripple and XRP stories, isn't it? Bullshit, bullshit, and bullshit. Well, what's not BS is the fact that I got to do a stretching session now because I just did a hell of a hard run. What are you doing? Let me know in the comments down below and also do me a favor. What are some of your most cringy influencer shillers out there that bring nothing but BS news regarding XRP? Let me know. I want to hear from you. And as always, Cody Co is silent. Choo-choo, bitches.